Jotlin in asymmetric mode. This is for Adeldraw. Um. So yeah, that's 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 that. It's been a long time since I was doing all that stuff. Um. I've been to Pascagoula. I've been to Newport News for, for work. I've been to NASCO. I've spent more time at NASCO than anywhere else. Um, I was down. I went one trip to Newport News. I got the safety briefing and then turned around and went home. I never actually went into the yard. Um, and then at um, Ingalls, we were there for a week doing construction meetings for LHD 8 in spring. No, winter of 2004. Um, NASCO... My introduction to NASCO... Ah, yes, Finn Kinteri. Yes, they, they won that contract for the new FFGX class. Um, my one exposure to NASCO was a really good one. In summer of 02, I, nice. I, I was please, working... I've been I'll out of college. Shut up, Duke. I've been out of college about a year and a half. And I was working for... Um, I was working for the um, um, LMSR design site. LMSR stands for Large Medium Speed Roll-On Roll-Off Ships, LMSR. The At the end of Desert Storm, um, Norman Schwarzkopf, one of the big, like the commander of the uh, American forces in Desert Storm, went to Congress and basically berated them for the state of the American Merchant Marine. Um, in other words, almost every major piece of heavy equipment, tanks, Humvees, whatever, that went to the Middle East in Desert Storm went by ship. But they didn't necessarily go in American hulls, and they certainly didn't go in American hulls owned and operated by the United States military. And so Congress um, rounded up a whole bunch of money and went out and bought ships specifically for the purpose of transporting large quantities of Army vehicles overseas basically giant huge floating parking garages imagine imagine a floating parking garage the size of a nimitz class aircraft carrier that's what i worked on that's exact well okay so hayes gray you got that's one of them you got the bob hope class but then the other one is the there are two classes of lmsr the bob hope class is the ones designed and um, originating from uh avondale shipbuilding in new orleans and then the nasco ships and i'm going to completely butcher this what was the lead ship of that class it's uh, it's not coming it's not coming right now. No, no, Macon Island was LHG eight. I'm trying to remember what the lead ship of that class was. I could have, I'd have to go look it up. But there's two classes of LMSRs. Okay. The reason for this is that the United States Navy decided they were done procuring ships the old-fashioned way. Okay. For years, the Navy had an engineering branch, NAVC, Naval Sea Systems Command, and they would design the ship themselves and build it themselves uh, and then just contract out the construction. And so the Navy then had to keep a large number of engineers on... Um, on the payroll, right? Guys to do all this design work. And uh, and so on. And then what they eventually wound up doing for this particular class of ships was they went out... Nah, not this... No, Hayes, great. Let me finish. You're, 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 you're partly right. Um, but not completely. Um, so what they did was... Um, they went out to bid, Gaelic, thank you for the resub. They went out to bid for two different classes of ship, okay? Well, they went out to bid for these classes of ship. And they basically gave the shipyards, um, they gave them performance requirements. Ship has to have such, such and such many thousand square feet of, of, uh, of um, capacity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the shipyards then were left to design these ships on their own... And then the Navy would look over their shoulder and make sure they met all the requirements. So in the end, what they did was they bought two different classes of ships from two different shipyards. Uh, they bought the Bob Hope class from Avondale, and I'm going to butcher it, but they bought another class from Nazco. These two classes of ships had the same mission, right? The same job, but they were very, very different designs. 
the main the main main the main difference is in the propulsion plant, right? The Nasco ships were gas turbine ships. The Avondale ships were uh, diesels, were, were, were medium speed diesels. To understand what that means, I'd have to go farther into marine engineering than I'm going to in this particular stream. But the reality is, is that by changing the main changing the main propulsion plant, you change a radical number of things about the ship, not the least of which is all, how all the secondaries line up, right? How all of your secondary and auxiliary systems, what powers them? The other, pro the other big difference between these two classes, of course, was the shipyards themselves. NASCO, in my experience, was a far better, far better run, far more organized um, operation. Uh, Avondale was known, was not known for their quality or their timeliness. And so, um, NASCO ships tended to come out of the yard in better shape, needing, needing less work done to them. And then, um, they also, the Navy learned that they tended, three, three, love it. They tended to be better uh, in the in, and to operate in the long term, uh, from a maintenance perspective, they were easier to operate and easier to maintain in forward operating bases, like Diego Garcia. Some of these ships were per meant to permanently sit at Diego Garcia, fully loaded out with equipment. They would go down to Charleston, they'd load them up with tanks and Humvees, they'd roll them over to Diego and park them in the lagoon. Right? Usually, one or two of those were always on forward deployment. Still are today, I think. And so. Um, the NASCO ships almost always drew that duty, and the Avondale ships almost always drew other duty. <laughs> Usually surge duty. Like, I think last I checked, one of them was sitting, was sitting in the river at Corpus, right? Loaded up, ready to go. Basically, they leave it there, maintained, loaded with, loaded with tanks and equipment, and it just sits there, ready to surge, ready to deploy as needed if, if, if the time ever comes. But NASCO, going to NASCO, working in that yard was a really, really great experience. They have a great operation there. I, wanna, I don't want to take torpedoes. That's correct. The, um, the Lewis and Clark class, Mr. October, I worked very, very briefly on the LNCs right before they transitioned me over to LHD-8. The same team that had been working on the, um, the LMSRs went to work on the Lewis and Clark class ships because so many of the requirements were the same or similar. These were ships built to sort of military standards. I'm going to I'm going to hit at least one I think on the Richie, maybe. Yeah, suck it, Richie. Um but we're crewed by civilians, right? All of those ships are crewed by civilians. Okay. All right, guys, here we go. Some more winners. Iron Light, Mr. October, Wow Zanda, Swanee, and Ghosts of Krell. Guys, if I just called your name, you have won some loot. You need to whisper Castle Bravo to claim your free stuff. Hey, four repeats, it is what it is. What is this? All right. Oh, okay. They killed... Uh, feels bad. All right. I wonder where the Gaja went. I'm going to have to probably run him down. Let's go look for him. I'm going to harass this Richie. I want to see if my little pop guns can do mean things to him. I'm not convinced that they can. I'm also curious if I'll draw his attention or not. I'm going to draw it now that I lit him on fire. Ha 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 ha. Okay, the gauges is B. All right, let's head over there. So maxed out. This is my favorite aged rum. Um, years ago, I went to Costa Rica on vacation, and the bartender served me some of this, like a sample, like, here, try this, and it was amazing. And I came back to the States, and a bottle has stayed in my cabinet ever since. It's great sipping rum. It is shocking to me that we need, like... We need more subtenders, right? The state of the American attack, attack attack submarines fleet is pretty bad. We need more forward subtenders. I'm a little surprised they've allowed it to get that bad. But yeah, I like this rum. Um, when I was in college, I used to buy uh, Flor de Caña, which is a Guatemalan rum. When we went to Costa Rica, the bartender was appalled. Of course, Guatemala is their neighbor. 
he was like, what do you mean? No, 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 don't drink that swill. We make our own rum here. And he served me this. And it was like, oh, okay. So I keep this on the shelf now. It's pretty good. One of the things I don't like about asymmetric battles, they're basically just battleship fests. I really feel like if you take anything but a battleship, you're missing out. I've played Destroyer in this mode twice. I'm probably going to be bottom XP both times. That's actually surprising to me. I, and I did have some some decent damage. I'm a little surprised I finished this high. Um, the Usa Yulin game was was a very low game. Um, I got a little spotting damage that game. I didn't get much spotting damage in the Ooster game. Somebody hit their limit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, security, maybe, but every game, every every asymmetric battle that I've played tonight has basically been, like, at least eight or nine battleships on the opposing team. Like, at a minimum. It's been kind of crazy. They're everywhere. So, it's like, if you want to, if you don't want to take a battleship, I mean, you can not take a battleship, but good lord, why wouldn't you? I mean, you're going to have HP to farm for days.